Hello, are you watching this video? If you are, please turn off your computer and go to something else. This is gonna be a problem. Because I'm gonna do something I'm no way qualified to do, but I just did a set of tutorials about linear regression, one using ordinary least squares method, which is a statistical approach, another using a technique known as gradient descent, which I hear, <laughs> I've been told, behind the scenes uses something called calculus. Um, this is a, a book that I really do love called Calculus Made Easy. It's from 1910. Uh, this is a reprint of it. It has a nice foreword uh, by Martin Gardner. Um, and um, uh, I, recommend, I recommend this book. I've been reading it. It's, been, uh, delight. it's a delight. It has wonderful little drawings in it. And it's, it's completely absurd that I might even attempt to say that, oh, I'm going to make a 5, 15, 20, 30 minute video and I'm gonna explain calculus or something like that. So I'm gonna kind of narrow my focus and talk in generalities and then in some specifics um, and try to give you a sense of uh, the, the aspects of calculus, which by the way, calculus, calculate, those words are similar, doesn't need to be some scary weird thing uh, that I couldn't possibly ever do, um, and how it relates uh, for any of you who are interested in a bit more behind the scenes for this linear regression graded descent stuff. But really, I don't know. Am I ever gonna use this again in any of my other videos? Are you gonna use this? I don't know. Maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe um, you should go practice piano, which is a lovely thing to do if you play the piano, I guess. If you don't, maybe you should take lessons. Okay, um, so let's think about this. So I'm gonna start with, um, I th here's, so I have a lot of videos, and I think this is actually a good place to start from, that deal with motion and animation. So let's think about motion on a computer in a computer window. I might draw an ellipse, and that ellipse would have a given x, y value. But let's just simplify our world for a moment and think about only, by the way, I have no plan for what I'm doing. I'm just winging this, just in case you're wondering. It's look because it kind of sounds like I have a plan. I don't have a plan. Uh, let's think, let's simplify this. Um, and think of just as it only has an x value. So this circle is going to move. Each time through a draw loop, each frame of animation, x is going to change. So I could, if I wanted to, create some sort of graph where the x-axis, and now don't get confused here, there's an x point, there's an x-y plane here, now I'm creating a graph with an x-y, this is confusing. So let's adjust this a little bit, I'm looking for an eraser. To make this, see, you can see now that I don't have a plan. Um, let's actually just call this, um, let's pretend this is, uh, forget about the computer window, that this is a runner. I can't draw. i wearing a hat for some apparent reason. Uh, and this runner starts at zero meters and is going to move uh, along this bottom of this place where this runner is running. So now, this is going to be a graph where the y-axis is distance and the x-axis is time. This is gonna to relate to calculus, I think. Okay, so uh, at the first moment in time, the runner is at a distance of zero. Then one second later, the runner is at one meter. And two seconds later, the runner is at two meters. And three seconds later, the runner is at three meters. So I could say this is a graph of the runner's distance as it relates to time. And calculus, or at least uh, uh, calculus and a key aspect of calculus known as the derivative, often written as, for example, d, oh, this is bad because this is called distance. Hmm, can I make this x? Let's make this x. So we're gonna think I'm graphing x as it relates to time, and so this is the x-axis up here. I might write dx over dt. Calculus is the study, part of calculus is the study of how one variable changes when another variable changes. As time goes forward, how does x change? How does x change according to how time changes? Now, this is relevant because what I did in the previous video, and I'm gonna to wanna to like tie this together, right? this isn't just a general video, is I was looking at how does the error change when I change the parameter of a machine, one of my, in my machine learning system, right? So what, how does d error 
change relative to D weight. If I change a weight, what does that do to the error? So if I can learn about how to study how certain variables affect other variables, I can apply that to a machine learning system where I want to change weights to minimize the error. Okay, so actually I want to, what I want to do here is I, I want to change the units a little bit because I think this will make it a little bit more interesting. So let's say that at one second, so let, let me, oh, sorry, I lost my eraser. Let's actually change this a little bit. So let's, uh, I'm gonna uh, try to actually get some units of measurement here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So let's say that the runner is running two meters per second, right? dx dt. Now, I, two meters per second, this is, I'm, I'm kind of leading, lead, objection leading the witness here. But so at one second, the runner is at two meters. At two seconds, the runner is at four. At three seconds, the runner is at six. So this is what the graph is going to look like. That I, get, I can't tell, uh, it, should, it should actually look like it's point, I, my scale is off. But you'll see the idea here. So what is the formula? The formula for this line is x equals 2 times t. I can always determine what the position of the runner is according to what time. So at 10 seconds, the runner's at 20 meters. At 100 seconds, the runner is at 200 meters. So in this case, the change in x relative to the change in time is 2. And it is that for any single point, it is always that value. Now here's the thing. What if the runner is not running at a constant speed? What if the velocity changes over time as well? So one of the things, if you watch my other videos about motion and animation, you'll see that, okay, velocity describes the rate of change for position. So velocity is essentially the derivative of position acceleration being the rate of change describes how velocity changes over time. And so that's why, by the way, when you look at a physics engine, they'll often be, oh, I'm using some integration technique. I might be using something called Euler integration or Verlet, Verlet, Verlet integration, Verlet integration. That's because what happens in a physics engine is I start with an object's acceleration and I want to then look at the velocity based on that, and then look at the position based on that. So I'm going in the reverse. So integration being the reverse of the derivative. But in, this, in our case, for what we're looking to do in terms of figuring out how to minimize the error according to different weights that are changing, derivative is the key word here. So if this is the function, and really x is a function of t, the change in x relative to the change in time, the derivative of this is 2. Okay, so now, here's the thing. This is a very unrealistic scenario. Nothing is going to move at a perfect constant velocity. But, so let's just, let's come up with a simpler, let's come up with another scenario. What if the graph of the runner's position over time looks something like this? So this might look familiar to you, this parabola, this exponential curve. Uh, you know, I tried to approximate a drawing of something like y equals x squared. So again, I've kind of un unfortunately named all my <laughs> variables in a pretty terrible way here. But let's look at this. So let's try to understand what does, how do I calculate? So I'm going to come back over here and say, In this case, maybe x equals t squared. The position of the runner as it relates to time is the number of seconds squared. So in this case, the runner is accelerating at, uh, at zero, so if, you know, at, at zero seconds, the runner's at zero. At one second, the runner is at one. At two seconds, the runner is suddenly at four. At three seconds, the runner is suddenly at nine. 
So the runner is speeding up as, the, as, as it's running. So in this case, how do I know how x changes according to time? Let's look at a given moment in time. Let's say over here. So this is, I don't remember where I am. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seconds. So at 6 seconds, the runner, and I obviously I didn't draw this correctly for this exact graph, but at 6 seconds, we know the runner is at, <laughs> not trying to scale, would be at uh, 36 meters. This is a very fast runner, I guess. 36 meters in 6 seconds, is that realistic? I don't think so. Um, okay, so now we could kind of, what we can do is I could say like, I could sort of look at this and say, well, what if I changed time by two seconds? Where would the runner be? Well, the runner would be then uh, at eight seconds, the runner would be at 64. So I could ask the question, when I changed by two seconds, how much did distance change? And you know, 64 minus 36 is 28. Is that right? I think it's 28, right? Um, so it changed by 28. Uh, I don't know, this is, th does this make sense? Okay, so if I have this exponential graph where x, the value of x is equal to time squared, the way that I can understand how x changes according to, um, a, how, according to how time changes is by looking at, well, let me, what if I went a little bit over this way and I went a little bit over this way and I said, okay, well, here's a point here and then here's a point here and now I draw this line. You can kind of see that this line is describing in a way what, you know, what the change is right at this point as I move a little bit ahead in time or a little bit behind in time. How does, how does that distance change? Well, in essence, this is called the tangent to the curve, right? If I were to take these points and make them successively smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and this is kind of a part of calculus, is, you know, well, what if we think about this in terms of like infinitesimally small things? I'm going to get a line that is tangent to this curve. And the slope of that line describes how the distance changes as you move a little bit ahead in time or a little bit behind in time at that moment. And so in this case, the way this, we can see here like, okay, well, uh, uh, let me actually write this out. So the change in x over time is actually two times t for this particular graph. Right? The slope of this line is 2, then it's 4, then it's 6, then it's 8, then it's 10, then it's 12. Right? That's the slope of the line. And in fact, this is, I forget what this rule is called, but in order to, if you have any graph, if you have any function, sorry, you can take the derivative of that function by looking at the exponent, exponent subtract, subtracting 1 from it, and then taking that exponent and multiplying it. So if I have this function, you know, uh, y equals 4x to the third power, the derivative is 4 times 3x to the second power, or 12x squared. So this is the first piece of the puzzle we need. We need to understand that calculus allows us to look at how a given variable changes according to another variable. And if we have a function that describes the relationship between those two variables, we can look at that derivative uh, and calculate that derivative uh, in generalities using the power rule. That's step one. Any questions? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pause here and in the next video, I'm going to look at the chain rule and partial derivatives, which we're also gonna need um, in the gradient descent problem.